Okay, I wasn't really sure I wanted to do a part two to this, but a lot of people are going to have questions, so I'm going to try to answer some questions quickly. Well, quick is a relative term, right? Okay, so I want to show people what happens after you, after I roll the beads. I found a system... And I've used many ways to do this. I've done the dunking of the beads on a fish wire with spacer beads in between. I've done all kinds of systems. And this one is tedious, but it works the best for me. Doesn't mean it'll work for you, but it works, sorry, it works the best for me. So what I have is my husband went in the garage and cut me off three pieces of some kind of a, I don't know what this is, some kind of weird wood stuff. It's not the greatest quality wood, and I don't really care because I'm going to mess it up. So he cut me off three pieces, and then I found a template on Pinterest where it was just a piece of paper that had a bunch of dots in it. You tape the paper onto your wood, then you take a drill, and you drill through all the little dots on the paper. And I think the paper was only about this big because I have this nice little space right here, and then I taped it on the end there. This one, I think I figured out how to make the paper larger on the picture. And it doesn't have as much gap in it. So I put three coats of sealant on my beads to be sure that they are water resistant. They will not be waterproof. There is a difference. Waterproof is you can dunk it in the water and nothing will happen. Water resistant is if you wash your hands and you get a little stuff on your bracelet, it'll be fine. You just kind of pat it off a little bit and it's good to go. These are not, paper jewelry is not meant to be worn in the shower like you do fine jewelry. So this is my system of preserving the beads. I'm going to take the beads that I made in the earlier segment. You need a box of toothpicks and these are regular toothpicks that people pick their teeth with. How many beads do I have? Five, one, two, three, four, five. Each one of these holes doesn't go all the way through. Let me put this one. And you can put toothpicks in the holes. Okay? So this is how I do it. I have used lots of different liquid um, things. I've used whatever Janice May does where you dunk it in her stuff. It's a watered down something. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, this one right here is the one that I found that I like the best because I've kind I've changed over the years, tried a lot of stuff, watched a lot of videos. People recommend a million different things, but so far this is the only one I really I hang with. This is a water-based sealer from Mod Podge. It's um, a little bit glossy, but that's okay. I'm good with it. I don't want matte colored beads. I mean matte shine on my beads. A little bit shiny is okay. So what I do is I take this. Oh, this is a new jar. You know what? Let me go and get an old jar. I don't want to open up another one for it to go bad. Hang on a second. Okay, this one's already open, I think. Let me... Yeah, it is. No! Oh! <laughs> wow, I have backups of backups. Hang on. <laughs> okay, evidently I don't have any that are open, so I guess I'm going to have to open one of these to show you what I do. Oh, my goodness gracious. Any other time, I'd be ripping and snorting through opening this thing up. Look at this. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay. All right, so this is the purple mod. That's this right here. Take a paintbrush. Toothpick. Put my bead on the toothpick. Now, these toothpicks that I'm using have had other things painted on them, so they kind of have basic built-in stoppers on them. Sometimes the holes aren't quite big enough to go over the stopper that's there. You put it on the end of the toothpick. I need to go in closer for you. There we go. Put it on the end of the toothpick. Dip the toothbrush in the, whoa, in the Mod Podge. And this is not a good brush. Let me find some different brush. All right, I got a different brush. This one's much more flexible because you don't want to scoot the bead off the end of the... Jeez Louise, I dipped that in way too deep. You don't want to scoot the bead off the end, so 
you want to make sure your brush is soft enough that the bead's not going to scoot out of place. And you just put a layer on. Is that the end? Got something on the end there. Just brush it on. Except for I've got this bump here. What is that bump? Oh, I've got a paper booger. All right, so just do it this way. And then I stick the toothpick in there and it works well. Let me show you with the others. Here's the flat ones that I rolled from Jelly Belly's kit. I just put a toothpick in the middle. Now, this is what will happen if you get overzealous. Look at this. Yeah, that's paper. So you want to make sure you don't get a little bit carried away with poking the toothpick in there. Let me find a toothpick that's more smooth. There we go. I want this one to go in there. And it doesn't have to be rammed down to the bottom of the toothpick. Nope. Let's try this again. Maybe this end is better. No, this toothpick is better. See, I should have started out with brand new toothpicks. There we go. Sometimes the toothpick will slide, the bead will slide down the toothpick, which means you're going to have to hold it up for a little while. And honestly, I, I don't have time for that mess. So I'm just going to take this and brush it on the bead. And if you have skinny beads, you can set two of these right next to each other. They're not going to, I tilt them, they're not going to hit each other. But if you use fatter, more round beads, then you'll need to put a little space in between them. Okay, so let's try these beads that we rolled earlier. Let me roll that on there. That's too much stuff. So it's just, you know, giving it a quick little swipe with the preserve stuff. It's water based. Really, not any smell to it. And even this one is a rounder bead. It's not going to hit. It's not going to hit that other bead. And sometimes, like I said, you have to space them out. And it takes about 20 minutes to an hour, depending on where you live and what your humidity level is, for this stuff to dry doesn't take a long time, but we have a system, so it doesn't matter if it takes a long time. The first go-round will be hard because you have to build up the system. All right, there's that one. I need one more toothpick. I thought I took five out. Toothpick. Slide it on there without trying to ruin your lovely bead. Kind of push it on there so it stays. Then you dip it into the brush in there and just kind of brush it on and it dries clear and it'll be a little bit shiny which is fine no problem then you put it on here now see this one is leaning a little bit let's just nudge that toothpick back the other way so there you have the five beads that I rolled in the last segment let me show you one more that you did not see me roll all right this is an extra long bead it's for a project. Uh, let me see, how about I measure it for you? This paper on the end, like I told you before, was cut at two inches. So this was cut, the end was two inches long and it was gradually rolled down to the center. And I rolled the glue, you know, just like I did in the other segment. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to do this one. Just, and this was rolled with one of the tiniest rollers that I have. It's very small. And the toothpick is not going to go all the way in. It's going to stick up really tall. Let me see if I can get my brush here. And I stick this in too far. This is higher than I thought. Take this and just brush it the whole length. Ooh, that was dirty water. <laughs> now my bee's going to be brown. Yuck. I don't want that brown. Alrighty then. We need to wipe that brush off better. Blech. Don't want a brown bead. Alright, so let's try this again. Much better. Alright. So because this is spread out, you will find that it's, they're ridge, it's ridged. It has ridges. So you want to make sure that you get in the ridges 
You may have to hold it on the end and brush the top part of the bead first. And then you can brush the bottom down this way. And then it goes in the dryer, just like all the rest of the other beads. Alrighty, so this is my system. Once I brush the first layer onto the beads, I let them dry. Then I take the beads off. I take them, oh, these guys stuck together, Let's space them out. Um, then I, after this is totally dry, which this one is not, I take the second board, which is labeled number two. I brush the second layer on, put it in the number two, and I know there's two layers drying on this bead here. When this one is done, I put a third coat on, and then I put it in number three. So when you first get started, you'll have a lot on number one till things dry, and then you'll have some things on number two, hardly anything on three, and it's just a graduated process. I set these up one right after the other, and I paint, 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 coat, 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 and then I let them dry and move on to the next one. But in the beginning, you'll have all number ones, and you'll let them dry, and you have no more beads to do, then you'll have all number twos. You let them dry, and then you'll have all number threes, and then you're finished. I like this system much better than doing the dips, because I find I don't have any drip marks I don't have to have any spacer beads. When you do the um, the dip where they do it on a line and they weight the line down, a fishing line, that's what they use, and you weight down the fishing line, then you have to have a pole to dry all that stuff on a pole. And then in between, let me find my spacer beads, in between all of the, the beads, there's what's called a spacer bead. And it's these beads right here. These are sticky spacer beads because they've been, you see, they stick together because they've been used many times with coatings. If you don't like your beads to stick together on the ends because it, it, it will stick to the other beads, can you see the coating has like clumped up on the end there? Well, that's what's going to happen when you dip. You're going to get coating on the ends of the beads, your beads, and then it runs down to the spacer beads. So what people do is they take a bead with a spacer bead, and then another spacer bead above it, and then one of your beads, and then a spacer bead, and so on and so forth. But then, at the end, you have to crack them apart. And I found that to be tedious and annoying, and I don't like the fact that my beads stick together. So, there's my system for coating my beads. I, oh, someone's mowing their lawn. I just wanted to come back and show you that. These are these, we call those spacer beads or trash beads. Then I got my toothpicks. Here's my coating. Here's my drying system, one, two, and three. And that's it. It's a relatively simple process. Um, I will, if I'm not in any hurry and it's kind of a... Um, you know, this is a little bit time consuming because you have to brush it on individually three different times. However many coatings you want. I do three. Uh, I will do this late in the day and it'll be a three day process only because I will do this and then go about my business. The next day I'll put them all on number two, paint them off, coat them, let them dry overnight, go about my business. Number three, before I go to bed at night, go about my business. And on the fourth day they're ready to go. Oh, there's that other toothpick. They're all ready to go. Or, if I'm having one of those days where I do nothing but mad bead making, I will blow a fan on this stuff to try to get it dry quicker. And come back an hour later and do number two. And an hour later, do number three. I'll go vacuum real quick and come back in and put something on. You know, it's just, however this fits into your schedule is the best method for you. I found that I just take time to do it when I have time to do it. You know? Alrighty, so that's it on how I made basic beads and how I do my coating for my beads and my, my bead system here for making sure I get three coats of this uh, purple Mod Podge on my beads. I want to make sure that my beads are sealed to the best of my ability. Now some people, let me tell you this, at the end, on the third coat, some people will take a very fine brush and brush some of that sealant 
on the papers around the hole, trying to make sure that it's sealed up and water won't get in between them. And they will, see this is already dry, they will um, put the sealant on the end as best they can to help, you know, help the roughness on the paper that's, that was on the rod, on the stick. And look, this is dry too. I can just pull them right off. And then I'll put the second coat on them and then the third coat. So these will be on number two board. So on the third time, I will paint, after I brush the whole thing, I will take the very fine little brush and I will brush the ends of these to give them a fighting chance against people washing their hands and getting the beads wet a little bit. So there's my system. I hope you guys um, understand what I what I what I did. If you have questions, please leave it in the comment section and I will answer as best I can. I'm going to do um, different shape videos of uh, different shape videos, different shape beads and videos in the future, but I didn't want to give you too much to chew on in the beginning. So that'll do it. Bye.